Welcome back to The Biome Show, live from Studio 4A in Ecology Plaza. Let's dive right into the first sector of The Biome Show, the aquatic biome, with host Mallory Caldwell. We have seen a great amount of runoffs into Lodix, which are streams and rivers. For my viewers living near Clark Stream and Lewis Stream, please be mindful that these two first order streams have the potential to join together and create a second order stream. These could then combine to form a third order stream. Please watch out for rifles, which are strong currents, and pools, which are deep portions in the stream. The merging of these streams and the high amount of rainfall also have the chance of forming lintix, which are lakes or ponds formed from the depression in the landscape. Okay, it's that time of the year again. Pine Lake is beginning to go through stratification, which occurs whenever warm water settles on top of cold water. As fall approaches, we may see a turnover of the lake where the temperatures will equalize and the bottom layer of the lake will turn over toward the top. Next up, we have the marine biological zones. On the screen, I have information over the marine biological zones. For more information, please visit our website at www.thebiomeshow.com. Now may the forest be with you, Adriana. I'm Adriana Baravitas, and next up we have forest biomes. First up, we have the tropical rainforest biome. Rainforests are extremely diverse and are home to more than 50% of the Earth's species. The average temperature here is around 76 degrees Fahrenheit, and average rainfall per year is about 71 inches, so make sure to wear a raincoat here. There is a large amount of plant and animal species, such as the kapok tree, lemurs, jaguars, toucans, and anacondas. The next forest biome is the temperate deciduous forest. The average yearly temperature here is around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, so make sure to wear warmer clothes. Here you can see oak trees, maple trees, coyotes, chipmunks, eagles, and bobcats. Next up, we have the temperate evergreen forest. The plant life in evergreen forests can be very different depending on where you are, such as fir trees or eucalyptus trees. This biome has animals like reindeer, elk, beavers, bears, or squirrels. The last forest biome is known as the boreal forest, like you might see in Siberia. The temperatures here can get as low as negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit, so make sure you dress really warm. Here you can see snowshoe hares, caribou, wolf, and lynxes. And now we go to Audrey to hear about the grassland biomes. Thanks for filling us in on forest biomes, Adriana. I'm Audrey Murphy, and here's your daily news on grassland biomes. Grassland biomes are large, rolling terrains of herbs and flowers that are predominantly composed of grasses. Today in the Southern Hemisphere, we will be experiencing consistent warm weather with temperatures ranging from 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Due to scattered individual trees, we will also be experiencing unlimited exposure to UV radiation, so be sure to throw on that SPF. There will also be high variation in precipitation with an average annual rainfall of 10 to 30 inches per year. For those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, be ready to jump from a cold, dry winter into a very warm and moist summer. Rainfall will also be more moderate compared to your neighbors in the Southern Hemisphere, but it's always safe to have an umbrella on hand. To all the farmers, it's looking like there will be high annual productivity for agriculture due to the fertile and rich soils. If you have any further questions concerning current climate conditions, please visit www.thebiomeshow.com to view our local weather forecast. For more scorching news of the desert, here's news anchor Olivia Jane Wilkes. Now about the driest of all the biomes, the desert. In fact, it is the driest because it receives very little rainfall. Most deserts receive less than 300 millimeters a year compared to the rainforest. The temperature in the desert can change drastically from day to night because the air is so dry that heat escapes rapidly at night. But the average desert temperatures are 100 degrees during the daytime and 25 degrees at night. Since desert conditions are so severe that plants live there need to have adaptations to compensate for their lack of water, leaving low vegetation due to poor nutrients. Some plants store water in their stems, while others conserve water by growing few leaves by having, or by having large root systems. As you see here, these are the plants and animals commonly found in the desert. Lastly, as you, if you find yourself visiting a desert soon, watch out for snakes and lizards and drink lots of water to prevent dehydration. Thanks, OJ, for that rundown on Desert Biome. This is Kristen Mailer, your local Tundra Biome show host, and things are about to get chilly. The Tundra Biome starts above 65 degrees latitude and usually remains between negative 35 to 10 degrees Celsius. Since we are in December, better grab your long johns and layers because we're in for a chilly one, folks. In the Tundra Biome, you are likely to see caribou, musk oxen, and even some predators like wolves, foxes, and brown bears. No need to bring an umbrella out. The Tundra Biome has low levels of precipitation, but don't be fooled. There is still perm permafrost covering the whole biome. Summer in the Tundra only lasts around one to two 
months, lichens, and mosses are the most important components of this biome, but you can see a few others listed on the screen. Increasing human activities are making an impact on the biome by causing damage to permafrost, which can result in long-term erosion. Last but not least, I'll be talking about carbon allocation in each of these five biomes. In the aquatic biome, nitrogen and fertilizers cause an abundance of algae, leading to decreased oxygen levels. A lack of oxygen leads to the dying of plants, which causes carbon levels to decrease, influencing carbon allocation in lentics and lodics. The forest biomes contain many trees, which because of their woody structures can hold carbon for a longer amount of time. In the grassland biomes, grazing enhances below ground carbon allocation. Most carbon in the desert biome is found in the soil and comparatively speaking, little to no carbon is found in the desert plants, roots, leaves, or stems. It is said that the tundra is the biggest carbon dioxide sink on the earth. Due to the constant thawing and freezing of the soils, carbon dioxide is trapped below the soil, keeping it from releasing into the atmosphere. That's the end of our show today. Hope you guys have a great week.